Hey everybody, this is Benna Dorch and welcome back to Taproot TV. We are so happy to have you join us today. We've got a really um, interesting topic and I get calls about this a lot lately. It's something that's just really, really picked up so we decided this would make a great topic for everyone today. And that call is about how you can fit Taproot Root Cause Analysis with your quality program. And while we don't always have that as, it's not necessarily kind of part of the Taproot course per se, but it can definitely be used to improve your quality program. And I have Chris Valley with me today. He is a quality expert. He heads up our quality track at our Global Taproot Summit. The next one will be um, in March in uh, near Houston, Texas. So keep that, uh, keep an eye out for more information about that. Um, Chris, welcome. Hi. Um, so tell me a little bit about what your background in the world of quality is since, you know, so everybody know what kind of experts you are. <laughs> so first of all, I like to think we're all quality experts because we all are an end user. We've all bought a product or a service and either it met our expectations or it didn't. And it, in some cases can be unsafe when right. something doesn't work right. Um, so my background, I spent 18 years in aviation. 12 working aircraft where I got introduced to TQM, Total mm -hmm. Quality Maintenance. And then I also became a Lane Six Sigma Black Belt when I was involved in supervising the manufacturing of aircraft. Gotcha. And I spent probably the last 11 years facilitating and quality problems with taproot root cause analysis. Mm -hmm. Well, um, air, airline industry definitely, we like quality to happen there. A lot of weird stuff going on yeah. lately, seems <laughs> seems like. But let's talk um, everyday pains, things that people, people deal with. Like a person buys a product and it breaks or fails to work or doesn't meet the advertised um, use of the product. And so, you know, number one, what would somebody basically in the quality world call that type of product, product ugh, excuse me, problem, and more importantly, why did it reach the uh, customer in the first place when it had a problem? Because we saw an article yesterday, wasn't right. it? A chainsaw and you t turn it off and it decides not to turn off. So right. that, that's, that's not just an annoyance, but that's dangerous. And, and that's actually a perfect lead in because that would be called a quality escape. Mm -hmm. So it's a defect in some cases, and in this case it would be a defect that reached the customer. Um, some people call it quality escape, quality release, but it's something that definitely shouldn't have happened. And, and that's so important too because this one people have gotten injured because it stayed running. So quality affects safety and safety mm -hmm. affects quality and when do you catch the problem. Now what's neat here is we can start troubleshooting right now and mm -hmm. all we know right now from the article is that the switch stays on when you turn it off. Now we have no idea if the switch was faulty. We have no idea if it's the way they installed it. We have no idea if it's the way it stored it. And, and what happens in the quality world, often they start troubleshooting on a quick checklist and they, get a, they have to do a recall but they don't really know where it broke. All they could do is quarantine it and say right. don't use it. So any fix that they would do right now for a quality release would be faulty in itself. Um, what's also interesting is not just quality releases, but if I buy a product that doesn't work, mm -hmm or it doesn't work the way I thought it was going to do. Right. They may have not built the product incorrectly. It could be built exactly the way it was designed, but nobody realized the customer was going to use it for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another quality release where it's a non-defective product, but it still doesn't meet the intent and that needs to be investigated. So, okay, well, why would somebody use something for a product that's not intended to use? <laughs> Uh, we do it every day. Um, I mean, again, we have all those funny yeah. warning signs a lot of times on products uh, that we won't get into, but... Uh, well, how many times have you used hairspray? Not, I use a right. lot of it. You, um, <laughs> but how many times have you used hairspray to take sticky stuff off from a decal or out, rub alcohol yeah. to clean something off because somebody told you? Sometimes it's a hack. Right. But sometimes they find out that stuff works and it, it actually makes things worse. Yeah. Um, and, and so is it, did you buy it for that reason? Did you come up with a new reason to use it? Or you really thought when you bought it that this is what it was supposed to be used for? Well, you have trained like over 4,000 safety leaders around the world in Taproot. And so 
why use taproot root cause analysis method for quality escapes? And, and that, that's a great question. Um, think about it. Taproot trains lots of safety people. Mm -hmm. That's usually the first people that come to the door. They don't have a process to investigate that's structured. They usually come to us because there's a big issue or their client says, you better tell us how to fix this from someone getting hurt mm -hmm. again or this environmental release. Right. So they come to us because we've been around for 30 years and we have a very structured process that really works for them. Mm -hmm. Now, what's interesting is I've trained less people in quality because they've tra been trained in other tools. Right. Uh, as a Lane Six Sigma Black Belt, I learned five whys, I learned eight quality tools, I learned the cacao diagrams or fish bones. And the biggest thing is I didn't realize that when I was teaching those tools, because I used to teach them as well, mm -hmm. um, 11 years ago I didn't know Taproot. Mm -hmm. But I did know that each investigation done with five whys, just the cacao diagrams, affinity diagrams, that many people sat in a room they didn't go out and look. I use a term called go, G-O-A-L, go mm -hmm. out and look. They didn't go out and look and they would brainstorm based on their gut and their intuition what caused a problem and then they would act on that. Well, that's fine if you know what happened, if what happened you're experienced with, but what happened is most investigations went with the compass of the gut of the investigator. Not saying they didn't ask good questions, but they didn't ask all the right questions because it was based on their experience. So. In quality, we taught remove the variation, make sure companies have standard work processes. Mm -hmm. But our own root cause tools that we were teaching had no compass. Right. It was by gut. Mm. So why go taproot? Well, first of all, it's standard work process. Well, going with your gut is often you go with what you already know. Right. You go what you know. You also go to triage. You also look for things based on what you think the fix should be. Right. So you're exactly right. So, so first of all, Taproot teaches you to go out and look. Map out your process of transactions. For mm -hmm. example, that saw. I'd be looking at that saw to see how it was built, how the parts were ordered, how it was tested, where did the test miss because you're supposed to sample your equipment to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. And did you test it after you cut something with it? Because mm -hmm. cutting something with it may be what caused that to become faulty. Did you test it right? So we want you to go out and look and in Taproot we call that a snap chart. Right. We then also want to identify what we call causal factors. Now in the safety world is what allowed the hazard to grow, what failed to catch the hazard in time. In the quality world is what allowed that defect to occur. Mm -hmm. Why did we fail to catch it? Why did it get to the customer? And how did the customer use it? That's part of that's all part of taproot. But we mm -hmm. guide you so when you do the investigation on that saw that's failing to mm -hmm. shut off and I do it using the same process, we don't have to talk to each other to know that we're going to come up with a consistent set of findings. Um, and it's not a pick list. It's not, we have, we have a list of root causes and dictionaries. It's, we're going to go out and look, we're going to guide you to ask questions when, with all the right experts in the room. Mm -hmm. The other processes that I used to teach don't do that. Well, it's funny you say that because I've, I've been hearing more and more and more. I've had clients contacting me for information that they can give their bosses on why to use Taproot over 5 Ys. I mean, because they're seeing how important it can be and how much better results they're, they're getting. And so I'm seeing kind of a turn yeah. of people starting to, you know, kind of move away from that and going more towards, you know, Taproot root cause analysis. Yeah. Um, you know, many trained problem solvers use taproot safeguard analysis right. to protect people and assets from hazardous energy sources. What does this have to do with quality escape? Well, it's, I'm going to hit on that topic, but the statement you just made about the five whys mm -hmm. and they're going through different things. And here's one of the things I ask people. It's not that people ask the wrong questions or don't ask the right questions, but I have certain experts say they really know about procedures. Mm -hmm. And in the five whys, they'll go down that road or management system. And I say, great, where'd you learn that from? This experience. In the tap group, we call those best practices. Mm -hmm. But I say, that's great, but if you're not here, right. who's going to ask those questions for you? And mm -hmm. they stop to go, well, nobody. <laughs> well, if you're not there, then they're never going to get asked. So that's why we built those seven experts. And that can often happen. Those. Exactly. Yeah. So now, safeguards. So a lot of people take our course and they say, well, safeguards are great for safety and environmental. Mm -hmm. You had too much temperature present or too high of a temperature, too much pressure and, and or too much hazardous material. And we need to control that. Well, so to control that, you remove the hazard, mm -hmm. you remove the person or environment that can get hurt from the hazard, 
you guard or isolate the hazard or you do a bunch of lower level safeguards like inspect, uh, train, mm -hmm. put labels on, don't grab this, don't use this. Um, so how does that relate to quality? Well, quality is all about mistake proofing. Mm -hmm. How do you prevent the defect from even being there in the first place? How, if your system is producing something, how do, if it does happen, does the system shut down? Well, those are all different types of safeguards. Remove the mistake, prevent the mistake from happening, or at the end of the day, protect a person so they don't get hurt when using your product. Yes. Those are all different levels of a safeguard. So in quality, I want to get you to understand how that mistake happened. If your job is to protect the product, in other words, mm -hmm. keep the moisture from getting into some dry product, your job is to protect the product during manufacturing. Then your job is also to catch it in time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's keeping the hazard which you're trying to prevent from the target, which is the product or the person. Mm -hmm. There's no difference except at the end of the day. If you can prevent it, prevent it. If you can't, catch it. And if you can't catch it in time, respond and correct it in time. And that, you know, we see every day recall. The word recall is out there endlessly. So things are getting out there, um, you know, past yeah. the quality checks, uh, probably in the way they could have be, have saved right. some of these issues. And it, that's very costly yeah. for the client. Not, it, I mean, it's, it can be very dangerous for the public, but it's very costly for yeah. the company that's creating these products and stuff. Yeah. That's great um, information, cool. Chris. Uh, Chris has been doing, <laughs> he's been doing a lot of webinars for me with clients who call in and ask about how quality and taproot can work together. Um, if you have more questions about how this works, feel free to contact us. You can email us at info at taproot.com or give us a call at 865-539-2139 and we're more than happy to help you. Um, we hope you enjoyed this and it, and it gave you a lot of great information. We'll be back next week, Wednesday at noon Eastern with another topic. In the meantime, join us on our blog for constant information. Chris puts all, a ton of stuff uh, and on LinkedIn yeah. and everything. I'm telling you, he's just always putting something out there that's great, great information. So uh, follow us on all of our social media platforms. Share this with somebody that you think could use it. And we just appreciate you. Uh, Chris, I appreciate you joining me. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.